Hey guys, it is Chris here, back again with another episode of MTG Misplays. Today we'll be playing some Mono Blue Tempo in Historic. Uh, it's a fun little archetype. Uh, not fun to play against, but it's it's fun to play, especially if you're like me and love uh, control style decks. So we're just looking at our opening hands. Mulligan the first one, a little too slow. Keeping the second one. Ugh. So this deck, pretty much all it does is get down 1-1s, one and then it puts curiosity effects on 1-1s, one and then it counters everything else. That's the plan. That's how we're going to try to win. In 10 turns, we will do enough damage to win, and that'll be good enough for us. Uh, could be a little tedious to play against. Might not be the funnest to watch, but there is some enjoyment in it. Even you non-control players out there have to admit that there is some enjoyment in having complete control over the battlefield. And you know, this deck, it's probably one of the best ones to do it in Historic. Really budget friendly. Um, pretty much build this deck with all uncommons. Uh, in fact, I don't think the variant we're running right now has any rares in it. We could have thing put in things like um, the Dominaria Blue 3 Pip Rare. That gets uh, more power equal to the number of islands you have, but we didn't. Um, just run it back with a bunch of counter spells, couple of a uh, couple of curiosity effects, and a couple of creatures. Now to say thanks to uh, Jumpstart, we got the actual spell curiosity, so we're not just stuck with a uh, um, curious pursuit. Not Curious Pursuit. It's right there in my hand. I don't know what it's called, though. And on the screen, it's a little small, but... Curious Obsession. That's right. That's what it was. So we get down our first effect that will draw us cards, and we're going to go draw some cards. We have a Spell Pierce to protect. This is what this deck is all about. First you attack, then you protect. Over and over again until you win the game or you lose the game. Either one. So this deck isn't... It isn't great by any stretch of the imagination. It's good. It can win games, but... It's not... Um, it's not the boogeyman of the historic format. It's not anywhere close to being... Uh, problematic. Although it is one of those, um, it is one of those old decks from standards past that people really didn't like to play against. But you know, it's a, it's a fun, nice little budget archetype, and we're all about uh, playing magic and playing magic the best we can with what we have. And Curious Obsession is a good way to do that. Good way to grind, get some good games in. Never gonna have um, never gonna have a game where you're basically at a l immediate loss unless somebody's playing something like a Narset wheel combo or something, something that just prevents your main draw engine from working. One of the problems that I have, and I think a lot of other control players have too, is that when you have a handful of counter spells, you never know which one is the best to use in a given circumstance. Luckily, in that last one, there was a right call. They're going to attack in, teach us that they too can attack for one and gain one life. So they're essentially doing two a turn, but luckily we can do three a turn now. Actually, four. Draw two cards, deal four damage. Pretty good deal for four mana over four spells. <laughs> Saying it out loud makes it seem a little less impressive than it is, but it's a, it's a neat little combo engine for the deck. And we have our syncopate in hand. We'll probably draw another counter spell, so we aren't in bad positions. Uh. It is such a good deck, though. Such a good deck. I don't know I've said that a lot. It's getting a bit repetitive, but... Uh, you gotta nerd out on the things that you like, man. 
And I like counter spells. I do. Counter spells are good. Counter spells keep rankle from happening, and I don't want rankle to happen. No one wants rankle to happen. One of those cards from the set, uh, from Throne of Eldraine that hasn't really been broken yet, but probably could be with the right build. Because he just has such, such modal a power in his attack that it's, mm. and he comes in with haste, so he's always going to be able to actually do something. Well, game one is going pretty well. Next turn, we're going to be able to attack in and win the game. Um, yeah, we should be able to, unless something goes horribly wrong. But When you have three counter spells available to you, ten, things tend not to go horribly wrong. And we got two for their turn to figure out what they're going to do and stop it, whatever it may be. They are thinking it over. They don't quite know what they're doing yet, but they know that they probably want us to stop doing what we're doing. And the best way to do that would be a board wipe. Uh, extinction event would hurt us pretty badly, but on the current board state, a extinction event will never resolve, so... Our uh, rainbow utopia of hitting things and drawing cards will just never end as long as we have counter spells. And curiosity effects are a good way to ensure that that never ends. Because when you're drawing three cards a turn, four cards a turn, you're winning the game. That's how magic works. They try to go for a vampire nighthawk. We decide that's a bad play. Anti-cognition will prevent that from happening. And they're done for. We deal 10 damage next turn. They'll have at maximum 10 life next turn. The inner spike in me playing this deck just comes out and is just so happy with all of the life decisions that are made. And it's not always that you're going to get that because some games you're going to play this deck and things aren't going to go your way and you're not going to find curiosity or... You're going to counter the wrong things, and they're going to resolve the right things. And There is a pretty fair margin of error for this deck if you don't pilot it right. And this game, we've piloted it pretty good. So we're pretty happy with the result. Our opponent, having their long think session, has decided to pass. We draw our island. Swing in. Go for the kill. Terramander. Really good in this deck. Doesn't help out with some of our spells, but it can just be a 5-5 when we need it to, and that's... That's good enough sometimes. Okay, we are back on Mono Blue Tempo number two. Game two. Uh, match two? No. It doesn't really matter. We are one in our little league here, in our little challenge game. Um, one game up. We should be doing fine. Kept a little bit of a sketchy open hand, but it should be fine. We don't want to run out of lands. Uh, if we miss a land drop here and there, our protection becomes worse because we have to spin some mana to get our engine on the board, but we also have to have one or two mana left over to actually protect our engine. Siren Storm Tamer may mean that we're in the mirror. Could be something else, but... The little 1-1 one -one counter flyer pirate tends not to show up in too many places. We get our own pirate down, hold up our spell pierce, and attack in for one. They reveal a planes, which means they are not on the same build as us. We decide to block them out anyways. The likelihood is that they're on some kind of flying tribal deck with Empyrean Eagles and um, that one Ikoria cat flying bird creature. Um, but we don't know yet. We're going to try to get down our third island. Sometimes MGA doesn't like that, but we'll do it anyways. Uh, swing in for... Maybe we won't swing. We will swing. If they want to trade, that's fine. At this point, we're still foolishly pursuing the doctrine that uh, their creatures are more valuable than ours, but 
in all actuality, ours are probably more valuable, as we probably have less creatures in our deck than they do. Like, if they're a dedicated Azorius Flyers deck, they probably have more than the 12 to 18 creatures that we have. I don't think we're running as high as 18, but... I think we're on the low end around 12. <sighs> Which means every loss that we get from a trade probably going to hurt us more, but... There's the Empyrean Eagle. There's the Anticognition. Unfortunately for us, without a Curiosity effect, we can't keep up this attack, counter, attack, counter plan. But... Our Spectral Sailors will allow us to start drawing cards. Maybe we can dig deep enough to find one. We have eight copies in our deck, so we should see it about one in every five cards. Now, if you go into hypergeometric calculation, um, as far as the odds go, they actually get a little bit better, because depending on where you are at the game, you don't actually have the 60 cards in your deck, so your draws start getting a little better, but we're not about that complicated math. Tried that stuff. Ugh. Too much of a bother. I gotta start drawing cards. We should probably be running that card. Considering all our creatures fly. And two mana draw two cards. Pretty good. But I threw this deck together based off my memory of Mono Blue Tempo and um, didn't really put too much thought in it. We're going to hold back. That pirate there, he makes things zero ones. That means if we do want to block, which we probably shouldn't, but we're still punting, so... Don't worry about that fact. Um, but if we do want to block, we're going to need at least two creatures. They get their own Spectral Sailor. This means they can match us on draws. But we decide to counter it. After all, counter spells are our resource. Gotta use them. But um, you also gotta use them in the right place. And that may not have been the right place. But I guess it could have been. We are a little bit worried about damage. Um, this deck will win the race against us in the long term, so we have to be careful. They draw their two cards. We'll see where this goes. Can't imagine what they're playing, because this deck has a lot of good pieces, so they might be... There are definitely a few variants of it out there. And depending on what variant they are, they may be running different things over other things, so. Okay, so this is the Rally Wings version. Luckily, we have a Spell Pierce. Spell Pierce, really good card. Also means we can now block out this pirate that's going to try to shrink our board every turn. Cards like that that remove a blocker every combat are pretty powerful. Especially for these low-to-the-ground aggro decks. We are not drawing curiosities, but we are drawing counterspells, so that's good. Pretty sure our plan was to just try, try to run our opponent out of resources, but... When they have cheap card draw, that's going to be hard. And we never got the opportunity to actually counter the card draw, so. So this deck, even among our counter spells, we have some uh, some margin of failure because not all our counter spells are uh, hard counters. Like Wither's Retort is a hard counter, but Anticognition, Spell Pierce, uh, Lookout's Dispersal, 
those aren't hard counter spells. And while a lot of the time they can be hard counter spells because they end up being used when your opponent's trying to remove something. But they technically aren't, so if your opponent has two mana open, you're not going to be able to any cognition their two mana creature if they have five mana on board. And we pick up a Terramander. At this point in the game, I was thinking it was over because when you're playing against a uh, Curiosity Mirror and your opponent puts a Curiosity on their creature and you don't have a Curiosity on their creature, you pretty much lose. But Terramander is actually the perfect draw here to help us stabilize against the opponent. Um, the reason is because we have enough uh, enough sorceries and instants in our uh, graveyard that we can adapt it. And if our opponent doesn't know that we can adapt to instant speed, they might just swing in and we can block it out because it'll be a 5-5. Five -five. They get in a Spectral Sailor. Are they going to swing? They might not. They might decide that swinging isn't worth it at this point. Watcher of the Spheres means that you can't target. Uh, it makes it harder to target things on the battlefield. Which won't be a problem for us. Because... We don't have anything that targets things on the battlefield. I mean, ideally, we could be running for um, brazen bars, but I just didn't feel like adding them. I wanted to do this as low to the ground as possible. Um, and a three mana flyer that's a three one. It is a good deal, but I wanted to relive some of the old glory days where you have a. Your 1-1 one, one on turn 1, your Curiosity on turn 2, and your uh, either, what is it, Spell Pierce as your backup. Like old older builds of the deck used to run, um, I don't remember what it's called, I think it has Glittering something in it. But it basically gave your creature plus 0, plus 3. And hexproof until the end of the turn. So you put down your curiosity on turn two, attack in, and then just leave up your glitter to where your opponent would attack, would use a removal spell on it, and then you would just fizzle it. They're gonna take a big swing in. Let's see where this goes. We suit up our Terramander. Block out the Healer's Hawk. Get down our Curiosity Effect of our own. Swing in, see if we can draw something. We are pretty much dead at this point. Ah. Game 2 looks like it's going to be a bust, guys. No, it's a shame, but these things happen. Especially in Magic. Especially in Magic Best of 1. Which is honestly one of the things I like about Best of 1. And sometimes you can feel like you're not a bad player. Because best of one screwed you over with a bad matchup, you know? Sometimes it's like, yeah, my deck's not great, but if it wasn't paired up against the Graveyard Hate deck and my exclusive plan was Graveyard, I probably could have won. Ugh. MTAA just likes to have fun with you sometimes. Keep that hawk off the board. We don't want that here. No, sir. We will stop the hawk wherever we can. Actually, the watcher may not be a hawk, but 
Sounds cool. Gotta get in my rhyme quota, you know? We'll block out the biggest creature. They had the rally. That is the game. Well, better luck next time. Okay guys, here we are on to game three against Platinum Angel 88. Um, I don't know how this is going to go. Might go well, might go poorly. Uh, we're one on one, so this game will decide whether or not I could recommend this deck to you with a good conscience or whether or not I'm going to recommend this deck to you anyways because I like it. Um, that being said, it looks like we're up against elves and a <laughs> one to reach creature on turn one is uh, not a great start for us, to be honest. Um, in case you didn't notice from the first two games, this deck's, uh, this version of Mono Blue Tempo's uh, evasion plan is flying. So, Reach is bad. Reach is real bad. I'm glad they decided to attack in because that means we can draw a card. Although, Dwinian's Elite puts three power on the board on turn two, so. We will draw a card, but, um, we will not draw a card, apparently. Me of the past is more responsible with magic than me of the present. Me of the past was like, hey, look at this board state. This is bad for me. I should probably make sure that I don't die this turn. Which, in retrospect, was probably a little too cautious. There's no way we could die this turn, right? Yeah, no way. But they could play a lord. And the lord coming down, meaning that we get hit for seven that turn, probably wasn't going to be good anyways. We decide to not block out. That means that our decision not to attack was completely pointless, as our Terramander did nothing. Now he has a curious obsession, and he will do things. Great things, terrible things, but many things. We attack him, draw our card, our obligatory we hit you in the face card. But, um, I think our old friend Elves may be, uh, Lacrosse with us because things are not looking great. Hey, look at that, a lord. Hey, look at that, another lord. Hey, look at that, we take seven. That's just under half our life total. Sad truth about this deck, guys, is that it does not run any board wipes. I know, that may be surprising. Mono blue, all cards under three mana, doesn't have any board wipes, but we don't. And I I know it's a shock, and it's probably made some of you lose faith in me, but just couldn't do it. Couldn't bring myself to put in a board wipe. And now we're going to die because of that. Well, I don't want to say just because of that, but we are getting close to being murdered. We're real close to being murdered. In fact, we could die any second. Not in game, um, in real life too, but who knows? We're still young. Still got most of our 20s ahead of us. We could do this. Not in game though. We're we're definitely dead in game. That's where we die. But we're gonna get our obligatory face card. Nom nom nom. Nothing quite like drawing a card off hitting somebody in the face. And in Magic the Gathering, that's not weird. That's not a weird statement at all. That happens all the time. Fable passage. We were hoping to get a spike counter off before the end of the game, but sadly our opponent just they couldn't draw a non land. I'm sure this failure of theirs will haunt them for many years to come. 
Now their victory, that'll probably make them pretty happy, but nice of them to only do that much damage. That was game three. We ended up one and two. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.